so I'm going to jump right straight into what we have for today. And I said that for today, we're going to talk about misleading opinions, misleading mindsets, misleading concepts, misleading ideas that people have about marriage. Okay, when I begin to share them with you, we will see why they are misleading and then you would understand the, the effect it has on your mind. All right. And um, if I once I start sharing, I'm, I'll, I'll let you guys know the kind of things I'm talking about so that you two can drop some that you have heard in the comment section and we can go through this together. OK. Now, one of the first things I want to say is that, um, you know, you really have to pay attention to what gets into your mind. You have to pay serious attention to how you think. In fact, like one of my pastors used to put it then, he said, you need to think about what you're thinking about. Okay. You need to check what are the kind of thoughts that fill my brain, that fill my mind. You see, this is important because at the end of the day, your life takes the direction of your predominant thoughts. You need to know this. The things you think about a lot, you attract into your life. All right. The things you think about a lot, you attract into your life and your life takes the direction of your most dominant thoughts. So when I'm unveiling these concepts that people share and sometimes they think it's wisdom, you know, in fact, there's something that someone says that when you have a good marriage, you know, all is well with you. But when you have a bad marriage, you become a philosopher. You know, I'm sure you've heard that before. Because, um, I mean, all you just do now is look back and think and, you know, think about your life, think about your mistakes, think about your woes and your sorrow. And you start bringing out all manner of, of false and <laughs> wrongly skewed concepts in the name of wisdom and nuggets. You see, now, the fact that something does not work for you does not mean that it doesn't work. And I need people to know that the fact that something doesn't work for you doesn't mean it does not work. And in the same vein, you know, we teach people not to make a doctrine out of personal experiences. All right. So if this is the way you know how to prepare rice, jollof rice, for example, that does not make it the only way or the right way that jollof rice is meant to be prepared. But you see, what happens is that people who don't have proper footing, you know, and, and exposure in knowledge, especially about the concept of marriage, when they have a terrible experience out of their own experience, many times they begin to bring out what is supposed to be wisdom, but most times is flawed because it is not based on the timeless principles of God's word. Instead, it is based on, you know, the, the parochial experience of one person. You see, it's bias. It's not, it's not universally acceptable. In fact, many times when we drill down, we see that the problem may not even have been the partner or the situation as presented because many times what happens is that people fail to identify with their truth let me say that again people fail to identify with their truth and when i say that i'm talking about the the issues in their lives their shortcomings their weaknesses many times people are scared to just sit down and face the fact that they are struggling with this particular weakness, that they are struggling with this particular behavior, that they are struggling with this particular, you know, consistent bad behavior or addiction. Many times people know that these things will even put them in trouble. I'm sure you've heard somebody say before that, ah, this my mouth will put me for trouble. Or, ah, I know that is this my mouth that will put me into problems. You know, I'm sure you hear people say that. You know, so they know that there is a problem here, but many times, not many people, you see, are, are courageous enough because it takes a lot of courage to put in the work to solve that issue that you have identified as a weakness in your life and as a potential destroyer, okay, of your life. So what are we saying? Point is, many times people blame others for their failures. Okay, they blame every other thing. They blame every other person. Listen to me. One of the one of the things I do the most is to shine the spotlight on you. You are the most important person in your relationship. You are the one I'm concerned about, not your spouse. You. If you are a better person, the chances that your relationship will work are increased by over 50% if you are a great person. You see, but the problem is that many times one person is 25%, the other one is 11%, and 
both of them are hoping that they can have a hundred percent marriage. Or oh, one person is sixty, the other one is ten, or the other one is thirty-five. Well, you know, but not even saying you should be fifty-fifty. The way marriage works is both of you need to try as much as possible to be as much as close to hundred percent as possible. Now, I'm not saying that you have to be perfect before your marriage will work. All I'm saying is that you have to make sure that you are committed to becoming the best version of yourself every point in time. So you see some people have very beautiful relationships. You say, ah, oh, these ones, they don't, they don't quarrel. They don't have issues. What happened? It's because both people have, have, both persons have built capacity. They can handle, you know, situations and issues differently. They can handle it well. But what happens? People don't apply their hearts to wisdom. Okay. In some other cases, some persons may just be unfortunate that their marriage or, you know, relationships go south. But then, it, they start bringing out all those wrong philosophies and wrong ideas that poison people's minds. You know, some people have said that marriage is a place of, of torture. Marriage is hard. You know, let me not get ahead of myself. I, I, I'll mention some of those points just now. Um, you know, so as, as I share these things, if you have heard some of those concepts about, about marriage, I'd like you to drop them in the comments so that we can also speak to them. All right, there's something I've said severally in this place, um, and which is the fact that marriages fail or succeed even before the marriage starts. Let me say that again. Marriage succeeds or fails even before the marriage starts. You need to know this. In fact, let me sound it again for one more person. Marriage succeeds or fails even before it starts. Now, what does that mean? It means that the quality of person you are before you get married plays a major role in determining whether your marriage will be successful or not. If you are somebody who has built capacity in yourself, somebody who knows exactly what you're doing, you have a good understanding of yourself, good self-concept, okay, good self-value, good sense of vision and purpose and assignment. One of the first things it will do for you is it will help you know who to not marry. You see, when people say they are confused about who to get married to, um, you know, sometimes when you dig deep into it, it's because all they're evaluating are externalities and feelings. Because if you have a clear concept, if you have a very clear concept, a clear sense of direction, let me give you an example. If you live, perhaps you live in Lagos and you want to travel by road to Abuja, all right, and then... um. You get to the bus park. You know clearly that you're going to Abuja. But when you get to the park, you see a very beautiful, brand new vehicle. And you tell yourself, I just want to get into this vehicle. That is the vehicle I want to use. And you go there, they tell you, oh, this vehicle is not going to Abuja. It's going to Obomosho or it's going to Sokoto. Will you tell yourself that because this car is very fine, I don't mind, I will get in this vehicle, then when I get to that wrong destination that is not my own, I will now find my, find a way to start going back to where I, 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 I was going to originally. You won't do that. Why? Because no matter how beautiful that vehicle is, it's not going your direction. So you would look for the one that is going to where exactly you're going to, and then you bought it. All right? The same thing when you, 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 you want to fly, when you want to buy a ticket, a plane ticket. You wouldn't buy a ticket, you know, for a destination that is not yours. As a matter of fact, many times when you want to even make a booking, one of the first questions you need to answer is where are you traveling from? And then where are you going to? All right. The where are you traveling from question helps you to understand where exactly are you now? This is what a proper self-concept and self-awareness will do for you. It will help you know exactly where you are now. Where are you? What stage of your life are you right now? What is working for you? What is not working for you? What should you be focusing on right now? What are the goals you're working on in the next two, three years? Do you understand? It's when you have a proper and holistic concept of yourself and what exactly you're doing that it will be easier to know those people that cannot take this journey of life with you because that's what marriage is. Marriage is a journey of life. Okay? So when you have a good concept, a you know, holistic concept of yourself, it will help you know who you should avoid, no matter how beautiful or handsome or rich or good looking that the person is. 
So you see, many times people jump into relationships and make mistakes because they are looking at externalities. Oh, that's a very beautiful car. It may not be going to my destination, but I will just feel proud to be in this vehicle. Oh, wow. You are going to be in trouble. You are so going to be in trouble. Okay? If you don't know where you are and where you're going to, you would not know what vehicles to get into to take you there. In the same vein, you wouldn't know what persons don't fit into your future. Listen to me. The fact that somebody is a wife material does not mean you have to get married to her. She might just not be facing your direction. The fact that somebody looks like a great guy, oh, he's a good Christian in church, does not mean you, you have to get married to him. You guys may just not be compatible in all the areas of life. You see, so that proper understanding of yourself is what guides you to know what decision to make. I've said so much. Let me just jump straight into it. You know, um, um, someone says something. He said, the mind has a powerful way of attracting things that are in harmony with it, good or bad. All right. I, I'm sharing this with you because um, these mindsets that and these opinions that people throw out there. OK, what people don't know is that you might think it's just a joke. You might think it's just a careless statement. But everything you hear. All right. Um, the mind is structured in a way or the brain is structured in a way that it, it has a memory center. Everything you hear, it keeps it keeps it somewhere. You don't know that it's there, but it keeps it. Okay, the next time it hears something that sounds like that again, it, it cross-references and says, oh, I have something like this. It reinforces. So every time you hear somebody say marriage is bad, marriage is bad. See this girl's marriage, he failed. See that boy, he was beating his wife. Look at these two people, they could not be faithful to themselves. Oh, marriage is a very terrible thing. The more you allow that vibe, that signal to get into your brain and sit, before you know it, subconsciously, you begin to really think that, yeah, marriage, something is really wrong with this marriage thing. It just doesn't seem to work. You see, before you know it, you're beginning to brood on these ideas. And before you know it, the more it sits there, it begins to create your reality. Guess what? Every time you pick your phone to go online, what you're going to see is another failed marriage, another case of um, violence, another case of abuse, another case of, oh, this relationship did not work, another person calling out her, her boyfriend or her fiancé. You know, you see all of these messages online. And what, what really breaks my heart, what truly breaks my heart is how proud these human beings are to go online and just write nonsense. If you have had a terrible relationship with somebody and it failed, please, that is your private matter. Keep it to yourself. Don't come online and start sharing nonsense and then they start trying to spite each other. You know, it's just so wrong. It's so wrong. These are the same people who come out and tell you tomorrow, all men are scum. Who sent you to go and sleep with all the men? Guys who come out to and say all women are problems. Who sent you to go and meet the troublesome women in this world? That is what happens when you don't honor God's principles. You would always lead yourselves into problem. Again and again, I refer to Proverbs chapter 19, verse 3. It says, a foolish man destroys his own life, yet his heart rages against the Lord. People make the wrong decisions and they get the consequences of those actions. And then they start saying, oh God, if you are there, if you are, what, what, what do you want God to do? Even sometimes they will blame the devil. And the devil will raise his hands and say, I'm not, don't call me, or it's not me, or it is you. It is you from start to finish. It was your choice. A lady gets pregnant out of wedlock and says it's a mistake. And then many times I wonder, how is this a mistake? How is there so many stages before penetration? How did all of that become a mistake? Do you understand what I'm saying? So the point is, People need to learn to take responsibility for what goes into the mind. Because from the mind, the Bible says, Proverbs 4 verse 23, guard your heart with all diligence because out of the heart flows the issues of life. Guard your heart with a maximum security, maximum security, because everything in your life takes direction from your heart, from your mind, from, from what goes on in your subconscious. I hope somebody understands that. All right, so let me move on. Um, I already mentioned one of the wrong opinions you hear about marriage, that marriage is hard. See, listen, marriage is not hard. Marriage needs to be learned. That is it. Somebody told me sometime that, um, you know, why is marriage or love so complex? 
And I asked the person, okay, did you go to school? Yes. How easy was it for you to pass through the subjects you passed in school? Was that very easy? No. You had a good result? Yes. Did that come easy? No. You had to put in the work. Everything worthwhile in this world, everything, success comes at a price. The same applies to marriage. If your marriage must work, there is a price to pay. There is a knowledge requirement. You need to have it. It will not happen to you suddenly. How come you don't just wake up, you know, live life the way you want and then walk into a university of your choice and go request for a certificate as an engineer? Why, why, why does that not happen? Because there is a process. You see? So when people say marriage is hard, what happens is that marriage, they did not learn about marriage or they were hardened. Marriage is not hard. Human beings are just hardened. Human beings are just difficult. Listen, marriage is only as easy as the quality of the persons in the marriage. I will say it again. Marriage is only as easy or difficult as the quality of persons in the marriage. So if someone tells you marriage is very hard, ah, you can never understand women. Women, ah, problem. Women will stress your life. Oh my God. You see, when you hear all those kind of narrations, don't accept it as your reality. That is somebody's shortcoming speaking. That's somebody else's weakness speaking. Don't, don't, don't borrow somebody else's weakness and wear it as your own. You see, and that's what happens in, in society. You know, people just throw a lot of scarce statements into the air and then people who are gullible receive those statements and make it their reality. You just borrow somebody else's concept, somebody else's failure. You, you take it up by yourself and you wear it as a hat and you own it. You have not even investigated yourself. You have never checked if there could be a different way. You just believe what people say. It's just like maybe a child who's raised by um, a single mother who was in a an abusive relationship and then the mother has told this child, ah, you see these men, ah, they are very selfish. Men are selfish people. Ah, you can never please a man. In fact, hmm, when you get married or when you want to get married, be watching them. Oh, don't trust anybody. Oh, don't trust anybody. You see, that girl or that boy, or rather that girl who's hearing all those things, will just grow up with a polluted mindset from somebody else's experience, not hers. So guess what? All the chances she would have had to meet decent and proper, you know, responsible guys have been destroyed because her mind has been framed to attract the kind of men that will be abusive to her. So that that concept she has always believed in her head can be true. Because that's what happens. When you believe a thing, the universe conspires together with your thoughts and delivers what you believe. That's how powerful your mind is. When you believe something, the universe delivers it to you. It becomes your reality. All right. So what are your thoughts about marriage? Someone say marriage is hard. I tell you marriage is not hard. People just need to learn about marriage. Marriage is as simple as the quality of the individuals getting into marriage. Don't take it for granted that you would just know how to stay married. No, you need to learn about marriage way before you are getting married. Many people, the closest, the closest lessons they take on marriage are just few days or weeks before the wedding day because of the compulsory marriage counseling sessions they have to go through maybe in their church. You know, the ones organized at the registry, you know, and the, the, the challenge with that is that for many, it's just something to tick off the list so that they can get married. So they don't even pay attention. They are consumed with the thoughts about organization, vendors to pay this and that, and they don't really pay attention. They just listen and say, oh, yeah, 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 oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, thank you. Bye. You know, you know, and, and, and at the end of the day, you know, they don't learn anything. Only to get into the marriage and my God, things start going south. And then that person will sit down one day after a very frustrating day and say, oh, marriage is hard. Oh, I pity any young man that say he wants to marry. You know, the one that even breaks my heart is, you know, because you get married to somebody from one location in the world, you believe that all the people in that location are bad people. You know, <laughs> it reminds me of a recent chat I had with someone, you know, um, um, she just found out that I was an Igbo guy. And she says, oh, I'm scared of Igbo guys. And I'm like, oh, really? I'm sorry, that's your loss, you know. And she says, um, my cousin was jilted by an Igbo guy. And I said, oh, it was even your cousin, not you. And then you are scared of all Igbo guys. Can you just imagine? 
which human being in this world does not or cannot jilt somebody? So long as you are human, you can disappoint. That is the truth. People from every race and every location, every job, everywhere human beings are, people are breaking hearts every day. Does it make does it mean that all human beings <laughs> are heartbreakers? Do you understand what I'm saying? So you don't take one person's experience and own it as yours and then build a doctrine out of it. If you do that, you are shortchanging yourself and you're telling yourself that of all the good things life has to offer, you're not interested in all of those because this area is the one that you have, uh, uh, you, you, you have believed as your reality. You see? So, um, next point. Someone says, <laughs> someone said marriage, um, someone says after marriage, the husband and wife, become two sides of a coin they just can't face each other but they have to stay together maybe you've heard that kind of thing together the marriage is is, is like two sides of the, the couple they're like two sides of a coin you know they are together but they cannot face each other in other words many people are in marriage or, or rather when you get married you are not going to be happy you're not going to have great times with your spouse but you guys will just be bound to stay together after all now you're married you cannot live so just manage you're not friends no fun you know no excitement you're just there man and wife in fact you hear people say i'm just there for the kids you know it's just because of the children i'm there i'm just managing once they grow up i will leave you see now listen the fact that those things happen in people's marriages does not make it a universally accepted truth about marriage. If people are having disagreements in their marriage, if they are ready to learn how to put things to an end, how to put the problems, the conflict to an end, if they are ready to apply themselves, they will solve the problems. Listen, many times people are just too proud. A marriage doesn't work that way. You see, one of the things people are not told when they're getting ready for marriage is that for your wedding to work, for your marriage to work, both of you have to be ready to die to yourselves. You have to die to yourselves. You have to be dead to self and live onto your partner. You have to be willing to sacrifice your own interest, your own good for the sake of the welfare and betterment of your partner. When you are getting married, it's about your partner, not you. Unfortunately, so many people are thinking only about themselves. What they will get, how they will feel, how they should be treated, what their partner is not doing right, how they want to feel. You know, it's not about you. If you get this point into your head and start getting ready for it now, you will see how easy it will be for you to handle your partner when those moments start coming. So just imagine you have this mindset in your head, you know, that, you know, you're going to be sacrificial towards your partner. You're going to work towards your partner's good and betterment and welfare. You're going to be committed to your partner. And then the person that you're also getting married to also has this understanding. And he's telling himself, I'm going to put her first. I'm going to go all out for her. I'm going to make sure she's, she's a high flyer. I'm going to make sure her life is beautiful. I'm going to make sure. Do you understand? Now, imagine that these two people meet do you think that's going to be an unhappy home? No. Why? Because both of them are dead to themselves. And their single purpose is how to please each other. That is where you see some kind of funny arguments happening in the house. Maybe, <laughs> for example, you know, there's a piece of meat left. Husband tells wife, oh, don't worry, you can have it. Wife says, no, honey, don't worry, you can have it. No, you can have it. No, you can have it. No, you take it, you take it. No, you take it, I don't want it. Ah, but you wanted it just like, eh, because I want you to have it. And no, no, you take it, no, I'm okay. And then it's like, no, you, and then at the end of it, okay, let's share it. Why? Because they genuinely don't mind the other person having it, just for the person to be better. I don't know if somebody gets what I'm saying. So you see, when people get into marriage with this idea, that it cannot work or you're just like two sides of a coin facing opposite directions but then you cannot live you know that is wrong if 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 you put in the work no matter the conflict you can get out of it so long as you're ready to put you know to as it were to lay down in quote now understand me to lay down your lives for each other for your marriage to work you have to be dead to self you cannot be selfish and say you're in love the opposite of love is not hate, it's selfishness, all right? Because true love is selflessness, okay? So, and service and, you know, dedication, commitment to someone else's welfare, okay? So, when you're not doing that, you are selfish. If you think 
that marriage will fix all your issues in your life, then you're selfish, all right? And it will not work for you. You're going to have problems because your concern should be how to help your partner become a better person. Let me take the next point, you know. Now, I, I, I saw a broadcast one time and somebody put some of these points. So I just collated some of them, you know, to use to talk about because, I mean, that thing was a broadcast. Only God knows how many other people are going to read it and say, oh my God, hi, marriage is hard. Oh. Hey, marriage is like two sides of the coin. You know? So me and my partner, we'll just be together, but we will not be having, no, 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 no. Remove all those nonsense from your mind. Don't believe all those rubbish when you see them. All right. Now, <laughs> someone said this. That wife inspires us to great things and prevents us from achieving them. Can you just imagine that? And you call that one wife. That's not wife now. That's knife. How can somebody inspire you to greatness and prevent you from achieving it? I mean, where do people get all these constructs from? And somebody will say that, say, ah, not true, not true. I remember when you say the same person that inspires you to greatness is the one that stops you from achieving it. I mean, what are you saying? Um, well, I had taken two points. Uh, three points. The first point was that people say marriage is hard, and I said no, it's not hard. Um, human beings are just hardened, and then they refuse to to learn about marriage. Yes, thank you, my sister. Please, I bind every visibility. We need to be visible in this life. Okay. There's some other people say that after marriage, husband and wife become like two sides of a coin. You know, they can't see each other, but they just have to stay together. You know, as though marriage can be beautiful. You know, and we've debunked that. Okay. I also just debunked the, the, the idea that, um, a wife inspires you to great things and then prevents you from achieving them. And I said that just doesn't make any sense because, uh, as a matter of fact, um, the word help meet, which is a word that, uh, you know, the Bible uses to describe the wife, you know, is a word that means a kind of help that only God can give. So when a man is getting married, what is actually happening is that to a good woman, <laughs> I need to add that there, all right? What is happening is that God has blessed you with somebody that can help you in a way that, eh, it's in fact, as if God is the one personally involved in your life. And check it out, every marriage that is beautiful and is working, find out the kind of blessings that these men enjoy, you know, just by getting married to a great woman, all right? So, um, so when, when, when somebody tells you that a woman stops you from achieving your dreams, then please know that that's a lie. There are definitely other reasons why the person did not achieve their dream. They should not blame it on, on the woman. All right. Um, I, I saw this one and it, it made me laugh. Someone says, when you are in love, wonders happen. And then once you get married, you begin to wonder what happened. Okay. Yeah, that's what it is. A wife is a help that only God can give. Yeah, that's deep. Thank you, my sister. You know, so if, if people are busy looking for shape, and anything external to the extent that they forget to check for character, you know, and spiritual values and, you know, long term, you know, and great qualities, virtuous qualities in the woman. If you go for just external things, you may be misled. And at the end of the day, like they say, you become a philosopher, you know, thinking that marriage doesn't work. All right. Now, someone says when you're in love, wonders happen. Then once you get married, you wonder what happened. <laughs> well, for that one, what I'll tell you is that, yeah, you know, they say love is blind. And, you know, uh, when people are in love, they, they, I mean, they don't care about anything again. You know, you're just feeling, feeling so fly, you know, you're feeling so good. And then when you get married, you discover that, man, marriage is not about feelings. Marriage is about sacrifice. It's about responsibility. It's about service. You see, marriage is, is, is that kind of work. You see, it's not, it's not just you chilling there. No, you have to be sacrificial towards your partner. You see, so what happens is that when that reality begins to dawn on people, that's where they think marriage is hard or that's where they think that they are no longer in love. You know, people say that, um, um, I don't have feelings for him or for her anymore. And I said, hey, who told you what you're doing in marriage? It's about feelings. Most of what you would do in your marriage as, as to have a happy marriage, your feelings will not be involved. You know, that was that, that butterfly in your tummy, that, that excitement. You think, no, it's not by feelings. It's by decision. It's by understanding. I need to do this, not whether I feel like doing it. I have to do it. It's not about how you feel. Do you get that? All right. So for those who are wondering what happened after they got married, what happened is that suddenly they saw that this thing is not sustained by feelings. Oh, the Bible says, for by wisdom, a house is built by knowledge. These rooms are filled with true and beautiful treasures by understanding. 
You see? So it is not just, um, uh, I like you, I like you. You need to gain the required wisdom. There is a requisite wisdom for marriage. Both of you need to invest in building up yourselves and preparing for marriage. Many people have shockers when they get married. They're wondering, ah, my partner has changed. No, they did not change. Before, you were not married now. You know, so you thought, uh, you see, that you live in your boyfriend's house is different from marriage. Oh. That you are living together for the past one month. It's, it's different. When you marry, your hair will clear. Before you get married, you see, it's just like the Bible says that stolen water is sweet. Food eaten in secret is delicious. No problem. That's what happens when you're not yet married. You're, you're drinking stolen water and it's sweet in you. You know, you're just hanging out, you're spending, you're living with him. Oh, you got, don't worry. When you get married, everything changes. Why? Because suddenly it is responsibility that will be beckoning on you. It is sacrifice that you would have to do to keep that marriage and that union hot and sizzling and, you know, enjoyable. But then if you were thinking of only the things you were going to enjoy because your partner will make it happen for you, then you start getting surprised. All right. Let me move on to the next point. Oh, I just wish I could see, you know, I don't know why the video is off, but please thank God you guys are still there. Um, so uh -huh, this is another one you hear a lot. They say marriage is like a gift box. It's beautifully wrapped on the outside, but no idea what to expect on the inside. Wow. You know, when you hear something like this, you think it makes sense. You think that, mmm, mmm, deep. Nothing deep there. Nothing deep there. It's false. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's people that don't know how to prepare for marriage that tell you this kind of thing. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Let me ask you. <laughs> the career you're doing right now, the job you're doing right now, didn't you know what to do to prepare to get to that job? The course you studied in the university. For example, before you filled your jump form, if you're in Nigeria or in the countries where they use the universities, you know, um, tertiary, what's that thing called? UTME, all right? University tertiary matriculation examination, right? Um, now, in places where they use that, there are pre-qualifying conditions for any course you want to study. You have to do certain courses. You have to write exams. You have to do tests to pass certain courses. In your secondary school, uh, what do you call it, WAEC, you also have to, if you're gonna be science inclined, there are courses you must pass. If you're gonna be arts inclined, there's courses you must pass. Do you understand? So the point is that for anything worthwhile, there is always an expectation. You know what to do to get there. There is a way to prepare to get there. Who told you that marriage is not like that? That you should not even know what to expect? No, if you don't prepare for marriage, you will most likely struggle in your marriage. That is what you should expect. So the challenge I usually, I usually have with people is, you know, you've been in a relationship almost all through your life since you became a teenager. But then you have not even deliberately taken time to learn about marriage. Because all that you have been doing was just exploring your feelings and thinking that all you need is to have somebody by your side to make you feel good. And then you discover that marriage is not somebody making you feel good, but marriage is you contributing your best to someone else's life. And then you start getting tired because that was not your expectation. So you see, you know what to expect in marriage. Like I always say, marriage does not fail when it fails. It fails even before it starts. You can actually create the kind of marriage you desire for yourself. You can do that. And that is by creating systems that would work for you. You can create systems that will help you solve conflicts between yourself and your spouse. You can create systems that will help you check yourselves and know how you are doing. You can create systems that will help you raise your children the way you want them to be. You can create systems that will help you relate with your in-laws properly. You can create systems that will help you save and achieve your financial goals together. You can create systems that will help you communicate better 
Do you understand? You can actually work on this thing. When they tell you marriage is something that you don't know what you should expect inside, that's what happens when you pick somebody from one end and another person from another end and they don't know each other from anywhere. You say, yeah, come on, marry now. And, and then suddenly they start trying to find out what both of them uh, are all about. You know, that's when you say you don't know what to expect. But so long as you have a proper sense of direction, sense of good self-awareness, you know, a good sense of assignment and purpose, you would know what kind of person you should meet when you are in the dating stages of your life or stage of your life as you're meeting different people you, you're checking them out on these points these are the qualities you're checking you're checking how they contribute to your future you're checking if you can see a future with this person you're checking if you can trust this person's decision making you're checking if you can close your eyes and trust that this person means your welfare and means the best for you those are all the things you're checking you don't just jump into marriage and then you know say ah, i did not know what to expect uh, I, I thought he was good now he's bad but you see oh, i thought she was an angel now she's a demon no you did not know how to prepare for marriage so let me debunk that idea that marriage is like a gift box that is wrapped very beautiful outside, but you don't know what is inside. No, that's wrong. What is inside is what you put inside. Let me say that again. What is inside that box is exactly what you put inside. If you put in all the ingredients for a successful marriage, that is what you see when you open the box. If you put in all the ingredients that destroy marriage, that's exactly what you see when you open the box. The box content is exactly what you put inside of it. And how do you put it there? By the quality of person that you are right now and the quality of person that you are becoming. Let me just say this. If you know you want to have a successful marriage, start learning how to be selfless. Start learning how to serve. Some people have never volunteered for anything in their lives. You have never been an usher. Because why should you be standing when other people are sitting? You want to be the one sitting in the best position. You have never volunteered to clear traffic. You have never volunteered to keep the place clean. You've never volunteered. Nothing. Everybody, people must do things for you. You will, see, let me, this is not prophecy. I'm not sorry. You will have problem in marriage. Big problem. Why? Because in marriage, the way it works is that you need to be ready to serve. Ready. Because your service will be demanded whether you are ready or not. So you need to be always ready to serve, to serve your spouse. You need to know that. Oh, there, there, there are fundamental things that, that I don't worry, Sha, I, I, I'm putting together a lot of work, a lot of resources, and very soon I'll be sharing them with you guys and with the world, you know, so that people can start gleaning these things and just, you know, I hope it helps somebody to, to, to prepare themselves better. For marriage there's a lot of people need to know let me debunk one more mindset and i may just stop there for today um okay let's see how much more we can take all right now um someone says that every wife is a mistress to her husband a miss for the first year and stress for the rest of his life can you just imagine that that every wife is a mistress, a miss for the first year, and stress for the rest of his life. Who told people that when marriage fails, it's because of the woman? <laughs> Let me tell you something. For a man who really understands what leadership is and what, what his responsibility in marriage is, even if he marries a witch, eh? if he understands what his work is, he will be able to, to direct that home eh? the way it's supposed to be. I make bold to say that because there's an amazing power, you know, in, in, in the leadership that God has given to the man. So what I'm saying is that if it works or it does not work, you hold the person that God said is the head responsible. Enough of pushing responsibilities aside, like Adam, the wife you gave me. Who did they give instruction? They gave Adam the instruction, but when things went south, he told God that it's the woman you gave me. You see, those are the kind of men who believe that ah, all their problem in life was from this woman. It's because she's disturbing them that they did not do their presentation at work, that they could not meet up their reports, that they could not meet up a deliverable. It's because of their wife. I'm not saying that women can't be frustrating. Of course, there can be those cases where, you know, um, uh, there, there are those frustrations in the home. But my point is, don't make it a general concept. Don't believe anything that generalizes the weakness of one person or one particular marriage and they try to make that a, a, a universal opinion. How can you say that the woman, the wife is a miss for just one year and then is stressed for the rest of his life? 
They're just trying to play with words. You know, that's just wordplay. But please don't let this kind of mindset sink in you. If not as a man, from the day you get married, you're already going to be expecting her to give you problems subconsciously. And even this thing that they call problems that they say women give, it is because, see, you cannot over, I cannot overemphasize the need for marital preparation or premarital preparation. I cannot overemphasize the need for it. Because this thing that they say causes problem all the time is just what you don't know. It is just what you haven't learned. People complain that women are too complicated, they are too difficult. No, you just don't understand her yet. And then they say you cannot understand her. Oh no, of course you can. Of course you can. You can learn about, you see? <laughs> there are so many things I have to say, but I'll just hold on to some of them because of time. You know? There are fundamental questions I ask people when they're trying to get prepared for marriage. The first question is always, who are you? What do you know about yourself? The second question then is always, what do you know about the opposite gender? Because it's, it's only when people get married that they start discovering that this woman processes things completely differently from them. You should have discovered these things and learned how to use it to your favor. But you did not know. It's when they get married, they start saying, uh -uh, why is it that I'm always saying the same things to him and it's like he's never been hearing me? Oh, it's not because he's not listening to you. But you just don't understand something about the way men behave. You see? Many times the problem people have is, is you know, in marriage, is communication and relationship. It's communication. You are talking to the guy, he tells you, okay, okay. And then tomorrow you say, oh, but we agreed on this. And he's telling you, when did we agree on it? And you tell him, he said, okay now. And he's wondering me, when? He said, ah, but I was talking to you yesterday. You don't tell him, this man, you can lie. You are a liar. You see, you are spoiling things. What you don't know is that at that point in time, you were stressing him. And because he could not push you away, he was just saying, okay, to end the conversation and let you guys move on. In your mind, you think you have had a conversation with him. He was not there. He was at that point in his life where what he's doing is nothing. He's processing nothing. He just wants to relax. It's been a busy day. He's tired. Maybe you're even nagging him and the only way he can just tell you to go is to tell you, okay. He did not hear what he said. You see, I've dealt with this kind of cases a lot. And then the next thing, you start, you start quarreling with the man. You're a liar. You're this way. No, he was not there. That was not the time to present that case. He didn't hear what you said. You see, my point is you need to know how different genders behave. So that you can, with that knowledge, know how to relate with them. Many times why couples quarrel is because they are speaking to each other on two different channels. One is on 92.3. The other one is on 95.7. They are on two different frequencies. That is why your message is not, you can't, your message is, is not connecting. Your, your message, you know, you guys, you can't just, you can't understand what you're saying. You're on different frequencies. For you to understand each other, you have to first get on the same frequency. That is it. You're on different frequencies. This one is shouting A, B, C, D. That one is shouting one, two, three, four. But yeah, you, what you're saying cannot join. You see, but you don't know this. And you can only learn these things when you apply yourself to proper premarital preparations. You learn these things before you get married, not inside marriage. Because by then it becomes frustrating. I'll have to stop here because of time. You know, um, there are a few more points I want to share, but maybe I will take on this again next week. If not, I'll just move on to something else. Okay? But, um... You know, uh, what we're dealing with are misleading opinions. Don't let somebody else's problem become your reality. Don't own somebody else's issues simply because they shared it with you. You now take it as your own and begin to expect the same thing to happen to you. If your best friend's marriage did not work, don't go and tell yourself that my own too will not work or this man self. You see, ha, huh? me and this my best friend, we've been doing things together. Or we got admission into university together. Or we got the same course. We said we were sitting with self. We graduated together. Ah, we served in the same place. Ah, now that her marriage has spoiled, that means my marriage is spoiled. You know, I've heard this kind of, what I'm telling you, I've, I've heard it before. How can you just run your life because of somebody else's experience? 
You see, it's about time to get rid of all of those misleading opinions. I hope that by the next session, I'll be able to hear from some of you. I'd like for you to also type in the comments, you know, some of those concepts you have heard people say about marriage, you know, um, any of those things you have heard, you know, that, that just gives you the, 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 the idea or the impression that marriage is not a good thing or marriage is too difficult or marriage cannot work or all men are this, or all women are that, you know, all of those generalizations. I would like for us to treat them, you know, together. So I'd like you to share your thoughts, hopefully in the next session, because I will need to stop for now. It's about my time. All right. So thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you've gathered one or two things. I hope it's been of good use to you. Something great is coming this last two months in the year. I'm tempted to announce it already, but no, it's still in the works. But I want you to know that from the stables of Single and Ready Club, oh, so much value is about to come your way. Uh, we're putting together so many beautiful things and I will share with you as it draws closer. All right, let me stop here for now. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of the night, okay, or rest of the day, wherever you are. And then um, see you again on Wednesday next week. God bless you.